ding 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 bubble time hi i didn't start that high enough but that's okay hi i am teresa tomey and i am patrick ziggler and we are bubble entertainment and this is Bubble time. Bubble time. Coming at you with open doors. Oh, wow. I'm in wow. Michigan and I can hear the birds. I don't know if you can hear them, but the birds are singing, which is appropriate for our guest today. I know, right? I, yeah. I've actually been having open open doors here in Florida, too, believe it or not. Which means it's cooler. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Everybody. You can tell your, your computer's going to <laughs> Here. <laughs> Who's here? Who's here? Okay, so I'm really excited about this person. Um, she's a dear friend, dear, dear, good friend that um, we were just talking about how long we've known each other. We met in Chicago, and um, first time we've seen each other like face to face in like a over a year, I think. So, um, which is crazy. So, um, let me uh, read her bio, and so. And this is for everybody. This is what month is it, Teresa? April is for artists. <laughs> nice. So this is Anne Latinovich. Has she has worked as a professional artist for over 30 years and has developed her own brand of artistry as a modern day Renaissance artist. Having received her BFA from Tyler School of Art, her formative training uh, included living and studying in Rome, Italy, which Teresa's been to, I've not. She received her Master's of Fine Arts in Painting and Drawing from Amazing, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is one of my favorite places. Anne is an inter internationally recognized portrait artist whose work has been featured in many galleries and institutions, including the Art Institute of Chicago. She's worked on projects with numerous Chicago institutions, including the Art Institute of Chicago, London House Hotel, the Blackstone Hotel, Chicago's historic water tower, Oak Street Design, and Michigan Avenue. And she also was recently featured on PBS American Portrait Series. So she's quite the artist, <laughs> if you will. And our good friend Jeannie's here. Hi. saying hello dear friends hello. hello Jeannie welcome so without further ado we'll bring on Anne da -da 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 -da. Jessica. Hi. Jessica. <laughs> so glad to have you here it's so good to see you both and Teresa to finally see you face to face I know me I have heard Patrick has sung your praises for so long it's so nice to Finally, ish, see you. <laughs> yes. Hopefully in person one of these days. And so, you're just outside of Chicago. I am right on the border, yeah. Indiana, Illinois. Oh, okay. So you're just a hop skip from us here in Grand Rapids. Not far. And not far from where Patrick's going to be. I can't. Yay. And Anna's been there, actually. Anne came and took some amazing photos oh, of yeah. Mark. And I she took that. Nice. That one she shared today, the one of me with the fun, uh, Team Fun shirt on in the farmhouse deli hat. Team Fun. Yes, yes. And um, I've got a, a shirt on tonight in honor of Anne's um, uh, Art paintings. Work. Yes, I it's got that. it's got floral. Do you say fauna? Would I say floral, floral and, fauna? and fauna? Okay, and um, fowl. <laughs> Flora. Our, yeah, that, yeah. You're fowl. <laughs> Are all birds fowl? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so, Anne, um, let's let's uh, uh, let's dive in, and we have um, some questions for you uh, about your wonderful craft, and we get to show some visuals. This is like one of the first times that I think we've sh we've showed visuals. So, I'm getting my questions. Um, okay. Well, I, I, I kind of know offhand the first one should i ask the first one teresa sure, usually do. okay okay um so normally when we have like a performer on we say when did you get bitten by the theater bug or whatever but for you were you a creative child i was i think i was born this way yeah <laughs> uh in fact i was telling someone yesterday i think 
my earliest memory, and I had to have been like three or four, was coloring the people on TV as if they were a coloring book. And I took the crayons. My mom, I remember my mom's reaction more than I remember <laughs> the act of coloring. Yeah, it didn't go over well. You colored but, on um, the TV, like on the screen? The screen was my canvas. Nice. So that was my first... Yeah, you know, no. they used to have a thing for uh, years ago, like in the 50s and 60s called Winky Dink or something like that, that, that you yeah. would put, you could put it on your TV and color on the TV or something like that. So I'll have to look that up. I, yeah, yeah, I wonder if that was in any way a part of that. I don't know. The wax was all over the screen, though. Look at Teresa's got the face that she I'm, doesn't trust me. I, well, I'm like, no, because um, there's Winky Dinks that you put into a little oven and they become little Winky Dinks. What are Love those? Them. Shrinky dinks. Shrinky dinks. That's oh. what I'm on those too. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm combining the two. So when did you start? Yes, that's Patrick's bubbles, bubbleism. So when did you start like actually exploring your creativity, like beyond just knowing you were a creative kid? When did you go, oh, not only am I a creative person, but hey, I can I'm doing something here. This is cool. I think pretty much from the start. I just think I was born an artist and I have been making art truly from as early as I can remember. Um, my parents divorced when I was eight. They had a tumultuous relationship. And at my mom's, my mom always made sure, I think she really appreciated that I was creative. And so she always made sure to have whatever I wanted, crayons, markers, watercolor, uh, fancy pens, you know, whatever it was, she made sure that I had it. So I really, and my, my mom worked three jobs. She was a single mom. Uh, so I had a lot of time. And so I was busy making around the clock. And then at my dad's, my dad was pretty strict around pack light and you're not bringing any crap. So <laughs> I didn't have the materials at his house, but he did have when Mac first came out with their first like Mac, the home computer, he had one of those, I think it was 1984. And they had a program on that called Mac paint. And I mm. literally started painting with a mouse and that computer digitally at that at age 12. So um, the fact that I was going back and forth between mom's house where I had you know, numerous materials to work with. And then my dad's and working digitally, it's really carried on. I mean, I'm in my forties now and I've been working between both worlds since. So um, it's just ironic knowing my process today that truly I have been doing that since an early age. That's it's interesting. So you, st you started coloring on TV and then you're yeah. coloring on, on a Mac essentially, right? And then in high school, I went to Carnegie Mellon University had a special program for high school kids in the arts, like a pre-college program. So I would spend my weekends and summers enrolled there. I would get on a train and take a bus uh, to go to downtown Pittsburgh to the university. And I had an instructor there. Her name was Pat Barefoot. We're friends on Facebook now. And <laughs> it was my first time drawing figuratively. I, you know, my parents didn't know what to do with me, especially at the time people weren't like, what did you do as an artist? Um, my mom was really thinking like maybe medical illustration, uh, maybe animation. So I really started studying figure drawing heavily at that time. Uh, oh. But Pat Barefoot, my first class drawing the nude figure, Pat, <laughs> I remember, I think I was just trying to be like really specific and like you know, I was like eyeing her up and like trying to get it perfect on paper. And Pat came over and she said, may I? And she took my hand and she was like, no, like this. And she started like making these huge sweeps on the paper, like doing a gesture drawing. No, we want to get it down quickly. You want to collect information quickly, intuitively. And that really, I think being enrolled at that school at that time was just so informative and life-changing and really kind of, you know, even in that moment, here I am thinking about it, how many years later in that moment, I think she was saying to me, be free, yeah. be, be free, make what you want and don't worry about it. And yeah, I, I carried that with me all these years. I love that you have that experience because as you know, I facilitate the artist way. And yeah. so many people have those creative monsters that did the opposite. 
and told oh. them you're doing it wrong. You're, you're bad. You, yeah. you know, all of that. And I love that you have that energy of remembering that, that somebody had, had the know-how to go, you know, use your intuition. Yeah. Right. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> What? It's well, just that inner critic. I mean, I think that, and I'm sure that shuts down. I mean, I don't know. I, this isn't on our list of questions, but I'm curious. Do you She's going rogue. She goes rogue on I love it. Go rogue. I'm, I'm a rogue. rogue girl. Because it's just. Oh, Teresa, we're going to be good friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wonder how Look much. Look how excited I am. Let's go rogue. <laughs> I wonder how much you believe that art is. You went to school for art. So mm -hmm. how much of it is learned, but how much of it is into like innate, like, you know, I, and what made me think of it is when I went to Rome, the first time we went to Italy, I came back and I was like, I'm going to be a watercolor artist. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be an artist. Mm -hmm. So I went out and spent, you know, 300 bucks on all this stuff and then spent sure. about four hours and went, you have no natural talent. What the hell were you thinking? And then, you know, that sat in the basement for six years until I goodwilled it. But I mean, should I have stuck it out? Or do you know right away when somebody doesn't have a skill or like? You know, I don't know. I, I feel really fortunate, especially having three teenage sons and kind of watching them go through, what do I want to do in life? What do I, you know, and they're trying mm. a bunch of things and I didn't really have a choice. And I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. Like I, it was just art. Like I never had a choice. Um, as in literally that's like, I just always knew that that was going to be it. But also I think a lot of that was nature. You know, I grew up in a home where my childhood was largely self-directed. So I had nothing but time on my hands, even as a little <laughs> kid. And that's what I did. So I think a lot of it, you know, even being uh, during COVID during this last year, you know, it's really taken me back to having time to make art. And that's what I've done. And I think a lot of what I've made this last year, because I've made, I've made a lot, like it's, I've made a lot. And so I think yeah. it's, that comes from having time as a kid to create in this way that it kind of comes naturally for me to want to create from the time I get up till the time I go to bed. But yeah, yep. to answer your question, I, I mean, I'm still learning. I don't know that it's not like I know everything. I still am. I'm constantly wanting to learn new techniques and, try new things. And so, yes, I do think you can learn, learn to create. Mm -hmm. So we're getting questions and I love um, you kind of, which I love that you jumped to a question that we have towards the end. So we'll, okay. we'll circle back with that. But um, first of all, very important, Mary Alicia Newman says, I was right about Winky Dink. <laughs> okay, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> and Teresa's husband, Fred Stella is here. And she, and he said, those were four wonderful hours for <laughs> Teresa. <when> she... <laughs> and Mark uh, is here. And Mark said, Hi, Mark. great, great question, Teresa told me, which Thanks. it was, it was. Mark's I will... a go rogue kind of guy too. Yes. Oh. oh, and the photo right there that Anne took that photo of Mark. That's, that's on his um, Facebook right there. Oh, no. And then Kevin is an artist. And um, he's going to be one of our guests uh, for this month. Hi, and he's Kevin. One, he's one of our regulars. And he says, could you explain the circular artwork? So we have a photo of that that Anne sent us. Should we jump over into what you're doing? Because this kind of came out of the COVID yeah, if world, you want, right? You wanna, do you have them in order that I sent you? Because I think it'll be good to go. There's kind of an evolution. Um, Kevin, I'll show you. There are two babies. The, two the babies. order of these or the order of uh, all, all your stuff? the images that I sent you, like, do you have them in the order I sent or do you just want to pull up? I'm, I'm open either way. No, I do. But is it of these, just of the butterfly world uh, or, or everything? One didn't upload. I, I'm open, pull up what you want. But Kevin, to answer your question, these are two wooden rounds. Uh, there you go. Thank you, Patrick. You can see in, in better light uh, with mm. butterflies kind of flying uh, encircling the the rounds. And then on the backs of butterflies, on the right, I wrote love notes on the back. Um, and then, you know, I, wa I wanted something that was kind of, I loved the idea of this rotten wood being so beautiful, being so imperfect and home to these, uh, to these butterflies that were taking flight. And so on the one, love notes on the back. And on the other, I wrote um, Maya Angelou's poem, Phenomenal Woman. 
So is that, oh no, that's your portrait. So here it is up close. And if you go to um, Anne's Instagram, um, which is uh, your name, right? Yeah. Um, that you can um, see all of her artwork there. And I, I'm gonna put it in the news feed as well. Um, explain those butterflies. How did you make those? <laughs> I, I've researched 18th century pith painting and butterflies, uh, Chinese pith painting, butterflies were really huge on uh, rice paper. And so those have been pulled from uh, vintage images and then I've painted on top. I, I actually designed a paper. I printed the paper. It's a super, super heavy duty cotton rag. Cut them all out, painted, and then and then they're on the wooden round. They're so cool. Thank you. I mean, you. and watching the process, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a ticker down below. Your website's on ticker. And then I'm gonna put um, another banner for your Instagram in here. Um, there we go. So that came out of out of the COVID time. So your you, your profession per se um, is portrait artist, correct? Can you sure. explain? Can you explain what what being a portrait artist means? Yeah, I uh, after I had got my master's degree, I received my master's in painting and drawing from the Art Institute of Chicago. I thought that I was going to teach and work in administration and go that route. Um, I ended up having babies and decided I wanted to be a stay at home mom. And so I stopped that. And uh, I started, I had studied photography in undergraduate. So I started photographing the kids and I, I, I Actually, my Nikon, I had a really nice Nikon through college that had broken. And so I had this really crappy digital camera and I was taking stills with the digital camera and then blowing them up. They were super grainy black and white to the kids. I would blow them up, frame them on the wall and parents, you know, they'd have, we'd have play dates and parents would say, oh, like who did those? That's so cool. I haven't seen that. You know, could, what do you mean you did that? Could you do it for me? And so I started doing it for friends and then. Musa and I were in a bookstore one night and I had just said to him like, hey, that's her husband. Musa is her husband. Yeah. <laughs> I said, he's the best. I said, um, I think there's something to this. Like maybe, maybe I could like do this for a profession. And we went to the bookstore and that night, and I still have the magazine. I had picked up a photography magazine where it said, look, this lady has this business where she goes to clients' homes and she does portraits of kids. L literally, her whole the whole business outlined everything was what I had just said to Musa a day earlier, I think I could do this. And here it was, and we rode home, I had that magazine on my lap like it was a pot of gold. Like I was yeah. ripping it with my fingers, like I think this is my next step. Ah. Yeah, so that's, the portrait business was born in uh, 20, uh, 2006. And uh, it just took off. And so I've been doing portraits since. O originally, when I started, it was just photography. And then over time, it evolved to painted portraits as well. So um, just so can, can I show one a minute? Yeah, okay, sure. Good. Um, hold on. And this, the one that I included, uh, I sent that to you. It's my dear friend, Susie. Uh, her family started coming to me, I want to say, a about 10 years ago and we had had our first shoe and then over subsequent years of them having me back, Susie and I became friends. I included this because I had shot that during COVID. Mm. Uh, we were especially careful. We were outside, you know, I haven't been doing uh, portrait portraits in the studio because of COVID. And um, I, I included this because that to me is why I do what I do. Uh, mm. I love those two kids. I know the story behind that dog and their connection to the dog when they got the dog. I've seen the dog grow up. That to me, that connection and being able to do portraits with people is something that is really special. And, um, you know, on Instagram this last year, I've really only shared my uh, creative work, not the portrait work. Right. People have said to me, like, are you not doing portraits anymore? The thing is, I've always made my own art. I've always done this, not on the scale that I have this last year. I just haven't shared it on Instagram. So this year has been a really fun year for me to kind of show what I do when I'm not doing portraits. Well, and you 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 dove into that um, because of COVID, 
once again, right? Yeah. But um, you can't tell as much, but um, Mark says, can you hear? Yeah. This is, this is actually what, what I was just going to say. So Mark got to it. Can you explain how you do a portrait? Do you put the picture on the canvas and then paint over it? Do you uh, do it from blank canvas? Forgive my ignorance, but I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> it is. You know, it's funny when I tell people, they're like, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> and it is. Uh, I always start with the, the portrait session, the photographic session where they come and sit in front of the camera. That way I have images to work from. Clients can either choose to do photographic works, which are strictly photographic straight from the camera. Uh, I do my own retouching and stuff like that, but they are strictly photographic or clients can elicit to have a painted portrait, which is where I'm starting with a digital sketch and then moving to oil paint. So it really is, a, it's, a, it's a long process where I'm shooting, digitally drawing. Again, I've been digitally drawing for a really long time. I work in a program now called Corel, and then printing, painting. So you- um... And it, it depends on if it's on paper. Each piece really is unique, the amount of whether I'm even doing digital sketching, it just depends on the commission. It depends on how many heads, how many people I'm doing, the style of portrait. Each 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 session that I do with a client is pretty unique and custom. Yeah, and what I love about um, some of your work that you've done is you also like enhance settings. You'll take photos of people like you've did you've done with your kids, which I love oh, the one yeah. um, by the wasn't it by the bonfire, and you've done all different things. So go to her website because you can see all that on your website, right? I mean, this it's all on there. The sky's the limit. One of my favorite portraits that I have on the website are of two kids reading a book on a sofa. That that background didn't exist. That's entirely hand-drawn. Yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that, that I do that that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, um, I love it. It's remarkable. I mean, one of the things that... Um, I think Patrick said in your bio, and I'm not sure who said it first, was modern day Renaissance artists. You know, when I, I mean, I've done my fair share of museums, right? And you see these Renaissance portraits. And, and when I read it before kind of going in and really seeing your work, and I'm like, oh my God, perfect. Oh, like, I love that. Such Thank an you. apt description of the work. Right? They do. It's so, yeah, it's just really remarkable how what? expressive the portraits are, it's, they're beautiful. Thank and, you. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me share this photo of you doing, uh, there you are, diving into a whole nother. <laughs> so a different look. genre. Right. Yeah, so talk yeah, talk about was, this because I love, out, go ahead. That came out of COVID. Patrick, do you have the one where it's like a flamingo hiding behind it's, a single plant? Okay, so so that was the first piece I did. That's that's actually photographic. That's photo, photo collage um, where oh, I had wow. photographed flowers. I had gotten the, the digital flamingo image online um, and had just kind of collaged them together. I literally, I knew that I was going to take some time off for COVID. Basically my building shut down. I had been sick. Um, yeah. I knew I had some time on my hands and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to let loose and make whatever I want, totally whatever I want, no judgment, not for anybody, not to sell, just for myself to make art. And this was the first piece I did. And I think it's so funny because, uh, do you guys think it's funny? Like to me, I it's love weird. it. It's like the flamingos, like going like hiding, in. Like yeah, hiding. Well, of... I think I honestly, I wanted to hide. Like I, I had just opened this major studio, um, <laughs> it had been two years in the works. Like I, it was just a huge, uh, I think like a lot of people just hard to kind of reconcile with being a business owner and how to handle during COVID. And I really just wanted to hide. And I started laughing because I thinking like me hiding, me hiding behind the camera, like I've created this uh, profession for myself where I'm literally hiding behind a camera. And then I started thinking like me hiding behind, are you really like, really you're hiding? And then I started thinking like, well, how do you, like, your friends really love you. You know, I felt, I think I just felt like, I really didn't feel very good about myself. And I and I felt so loved and embraced by friends and, and what was happening at the time and connecting with other business owners. And I thought, you know, what if you picked an animal that you love to symbolize you? What if you picked an mm. animal that you thought was, 
beautiful and elegant and graceful and was handling this with grace, even though maybe you wanted to hide, like what would that look like? And then that's, that was the start of that series. And then I started thinking, how could I push this artistically? I have the time. How could I push this? And that's when those other pieces started to evolve where they really were painting and, and all time consuming. And you put it on, I love, uh, our friend Rebecca says that, that it, it's a portrait of wild Teresa. <laughs> 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 but, um, uh, you put it on one of them on Instagram and somebody found it and like purchased it, right? Wanted to. Um, yeah, I actually I ended up selling. I've had some really good sales. Uh, some of the originals have sold of those works, although I haven't advertised those because I kind of have a special plan for the originals. Um, but I, in fact, I have someone coming Wednesday to, to pick one up, but I, um, or tomorrow, uh, I ended up making prints, a limited edition run, and I ended up putting them on the site. And the only advertising I've done has been really Instagram and Facebook, and that's how they've been selling and by word of mouth. And I love that that came out of COVID and just wanting to express and totally. go back to, to something. Um, I love this one too. This feels very Renaissance to me. Thank you. Similar so, concept. Absolutely. With the black background, the dark black background, it's just. And it's funny. Like, I think it's funny. You know, it's it's whimsical and it's and it's funny and it's a little bit, you know, the thought of hiding in, in the plants is kind of it's silly. Yeah. It's remarkable. It's a remarkable piece. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And the lemons we make. Oh, so the lemons, you got fruit in there. You got yeah. it. But isn't that re Renaissance when they do the food and the fruit and all that? Is that the Renaissance era? Am I getting that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I always refer to it as the paintings and the game masterpiece is how mm -hmm. I <laughs> my go to. Teresa's got a question. Um, did the did the moniker Renaissance artist like when you did this that portrait or that painting? You did mm -hmm. that over during COVID. Yes. So. That um, do, when does the the moniker Renaissance modern day Renaissance artist when does that when is that born inside of you did you did you go are you are you ready for that answer Teresa are you really ready are you I guys am. sitting down I am are you sitting down Patrick knows this story I, I think it was 20, um, 2016, I had had a pulmonary embolism. I had been, I had been having symptoms for months and I kept going to the doctor. I said, there's something wrong with my leg. I've got this red bump, uh, it's swollen. Something's wrong. Doctors kept sending me home. Long story short, I had a clot in my leg, which ended up being leading to clots in my lungs and I almost died. And when that happened, I had this weird, uh, experience where I left my body and I flew. Mm -hmm. And in that I heard a voice say you can go back or you can go come uh but if you go back you need to do the things that you've been putting off that you've wanted to do that you haven't done and at the top of the list was i had been saying for years i need to go back to painting as an artist i need to paint again i, I was really kind of lost in the portrait business. I've been doing the photographs over and over and over on repeat. I really needed to, I felt like I wasn't bringing all of me to the table. I wasn't really bringing all that I had to offer. And so I was in the hospital for a week. The week I got out, I started painting. And that was, people had said to me when they started seeing how I was combining all the elements, you know, everything across the board from photography to fine art oil painting, Oh my God! You're someone said you're your modern day Renaissance artist. That's where that was born. Um, but that's that's was what that was the game changer moment for me. What a wonderful story! I mean, wonderful that you got on the other side of that. But what yeah. an interesting what an interesting way to find your purpose. <laughs> for sure, for yeah. sure. I think it really um, it really gave me an appreciation for for every day. You know, Patrick, I know loves to say carpe diem. Um, I think before I, I would hope that I've always been a glass full kind of person, but I think that experience really makes it real. Like our time here is really precious, you know? Yeah. And I think COVID again, another say, reminder. COVID also sent you into overdrive and yeah, another yeah. reminder. Yeah. Well, and also because you are somebody that is considered, um, uh, 
high risk, right? Because of what you've yeah. been through and everything. So it really did, you know, but you did put yourself out there for a few different things. And, um, you know, when you took the photos for us, I'm, I'm remembering that was, you came with the mask. We were on yeah, the mask ready. through that, ready with through that whole time. And ready. Yeah. Um, Jeannie says that she, I simply love the flamingo with flowers and fruit, which is so the great. The simplicity of, yeah. The simplicity, she, oh. Thank you for saying that. I Cause that was really, you know, I really struggle with how complex I make everything. I really do. Everything is just seems complicated, the process. And there are often times that I wish it could be easy. And I really was asking myself through creating that series, how simple can I make it? How simple nice. can I, how can I narrow it down and just be present and make it just easy? Well, that's another thing that COVID has done. It's made us very present. You know, very. I mean, we, we were talking about it in Artist Way last night and Kevin, also agrees he loved the game master. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to see that. Um, I want to show this other uh, because it, it's a. I, I like how it's kind of your um, your info, um, your silver linings, and um, there you are again with. The, is that an egret? That yes, and that piece is going to South Carolina tomorrow. Well, tomorrow it's being delivered tomorrow. And then it'll be uh, the owner, the new owner is coming to pick it up and to drive it back. He's flying to pick it up and driving it back. Oh my gosh. And how big is that? Yeah, it's big. It's 40 by 50 and then plus the frame. Wow. Yeah, wow. So it's about 40, 48 by 50. 50 well, here's a, here's a, uh, uh, if Mark said, forgive my ignorance. Do you sell them framed or do you work with the client to figure yeah, we out? We do framing. I've always done framing with the portrait business. So, but do um, you, does, is it framed when you sell it or do you work with the client? No, I always work with the client. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, cause that seems like such a perfect frame. I'm like, do you pick it? And then they purchase it from there. That that frame I had picked and I, but I did give them, you know, we had talked about they're building a new home. He had a, ideas for where it would go. We talked about um, the feel of the new place that they had just built. And so I kind of worked with them and then, you know, really people don't want to, they're, they're less concerned. I think about matching the furniture as they are about complementing the piece, which is right. great. And so then I typically make suggestions like here's what would, what I think would, would be great. And we narrow it down to maybe four pieces and they get to pick. So do you deal mostly with people who understand art or are most of your clients on, the, on, the, on that side? Are they just like, oh, well, that's just a pretty picture and I want that. Like, I find that people, you know, it's funny, like a lot of times people will call and they'll say, I want that. How much is it? But they're not really worried about how much it is. It's just a way to open up the conversation. They, I don't think they know what else to ask. And then so once we start talking, um, you know, and I like to talk about what, the piece means and what are they saying? I love hearing what other people see in the work. It's really not, yes, mm. I created it, but I'm not attached to my interpretation. I, I love that people have their own take on, take on things. Um, yeah, I, th I find people come from all, all different. And, and have you received criticism? Like, have you, has, has it, you, have you ever been gut punched by somebody when you were like, Oh man, this was I poured my heart into this. I'm just curious. Um, I want to say no, not no. Nice. I don't think so. That's you've, had, you, you've had frustrations with people on I what the, they I want, think, right? And you have to kind of guide them to something. I think the hardest, I think running a business is hard. Being That's probably a the better question. What's yeah, I think like, it's business? not so much. I don't, I don't have many... Um, I don't think I've ever had someone say, I don't like this or why didn't you do it this way? Or, or I want it this way. You didn't do it the way I wanted it. People are pretty good about relinquishing, you know, oftentimes they'll people say, cause I try to be considerate and they'll say, no, you're the artist, do what you want. You know, I really do worry about, especially if it's a portrait commission, what they're, I want to know ahead, like kind of get a gist of what they're looking for. Um, yeah. If, if anything, I think just running a business is, it, no, you got to yeah. have the yeah. artist yeah. And, yeah. and the entrepreneur is, is a real uh, brain dilemma. Well, yeah. well, it's an interesting cause thing because we deal with it when we're creating projects and stuff like that. And you sure. do want to create something that will sell, but at the same time, you, you want to create things that you're passionate about, right? Totally. And so, and so with you, it's kind of interesting that with portraits, you kind of can guide 
the sale in advance, right? But then with your artwork, it is creating what's inside of you and what wants to blossom. So that's why I love that through the Instagram, you know, people are finding it. Um, and, yeah, I was gonna say, and Mickey is late. So <laughs> and Mickey is an actor Mickey. friend of ours who we interviewed on Fubble Time. But I wanna show this other thing and we're about wrapping up. But I think up. Mickey needs to go to your website too because yeah. I think he would appreciate your... Um, so what is this last I one? You and Gavin yeah. should get a portrait, Mickey. Okay. Yeah, if they're doing photographs uh, too, so alongside the painting and the sculptural pieces, I've been shooting photographs. Uh, That's a Robert. photograph? Oh it my is. God, I thought it was a drawing. Wow. It looks like, right? It looks like a black and white charcoal drawing with maybe some like abstract butterflies. It almost looks uh, like there's live elements into it and it almost looks like a mixture. Like Yeah, the, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a photo. very cool. Very cool. Um, well, shoot, we are wrapping up. Oh my um, gosh, that went <laughs> way too fast. We didn't even, we got questions. I know, but it was a good conversation. So the thing I just want to put out there is, um, do you have, speaking of masterpiece, do you have a masterpiece that you would like to attempt that you haven't done yet? Yeah, uh, I do. The piece that I sent you that I did for my wall, the big eight oh. grid. Uh, I have a wall that's that could really use a piece about 10 by 15 feet. And instead of doing a grid the next time, I'm gonna do one large canvas with an oil painting on it. So that's, that's next. After I'm gonna wrap everything up that I've been working on this last year, I'm gonna turn it into a book with some essays, and then I'm gonna do that piece. That's so great. So then after that, you'll have to create another masterpiece, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, always, it's never gonna end. It's always gonna be something. I yeah. visualize you as this paintbrush that when you squeeze the paint, that it goes out, but then there's still paint and there's always like, it's never gonna stop. It's always yeah. gonna keep giving yeah. and giving creatively. It's more and just, more, I, lo I love that. I just, I just wanna real quick again, just show your work. I mean, I love this of you just at it right here. Um, is that what they used for the PBS interview? Did, uh, did yeah, they use? Yeah, that was on there. And then this is so great. I love that piece. And there's Teresa hiding. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the butterflies are just, oh, and so it's that, it's that, butterflies. I that's mean, what she's talking about. It's that piece, right, Anne, that you were talking about? Yeah, those are the, the two pieces that are behind me. I think you can see the one. Well, one. but the, the behind the butterflies, is that the one you're talking about that is your masterpiece that you're in working no, with? No, 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 oh. I, have another, I have another big wall. Okay, oh, wow. Yeah, that piece is amazing, Teresa. You gotta go to her website or her oh, Instagram God. and see it. And then her portraits and her portraits, I mean, you know, there has to be a Bigsby and Lolly portrait someday. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I just saw well, Bigsby as a baby, right? On, yes, on post. Yes, my gosh, destroying Mark's boot with his <laughs> expensive boot. What what uh, a joy. If she is correct here. Then she says, Time went too fast, and you are an amazing young woman and very talented artist. I love your work. God bless you. Ah, uh, so sweet. my day is made. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? And Rebecca Thank said, you. what a mi mix of whimsical and formal. I didn't know I would be so impressed tonight. Wonderful and refreshing. Okay, my heart's melting. Somebody, yeah. somebody pick me up off the floor. Nice. Rebecca, you know we don't interview slackers. We interview <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the real oh, deal. Yeah. The well, real we, deal. We, you are our first artist um, uh with this kind of artwork. It's just, I'm so glad that we were able to show your artwork during our show. It's thank great. you. Guys, thank yeah. you so much for your time and connecting with me. I feel really grateful. Thank you. And I put all of your links in the um, in the actual feed because then people can simply link on it and uh, click on it and That's click great. over to it. So check her out on Instagram, check her out on um, her website and Facebook. And you are just such a joy, such a talent and multifaceted in so many ways and a good, good dear friend. So ah, I'm so, oh, oh, my friend Becky. And she's a very creative person too. Wow, yes. what an amazing talent. Ah, thank you, Becky. Our, our friend Becky. I shouldn't say my friend, our friend, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, Anne, thank you so Love much. Guys. I can't much wait to see you in person someday. Thanks for having me, me too. I know. Okay, bye-bye. the two of you. Oh, 
Yes, she, she doesn't is. She, know yet. You didn't tell said, her, we, we, but I, I, no. I'm saying we're doing that. We need oh, a new photograph, she said. Oh, I would love that. I know, right? Because yeah. you said you okay. took up, right? <laughs> Listen, I'm your girl. I'm your girl. <laughs> she did this for me in my photo. <laughs> Don't tell people. I, I said, I said, I want to do the whole interview like this. <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Love you guys. Love Thank you, too. you so much. Bye. Now I don't feel like I can let it go. <laughs> uh oh, we're all gonna look now. Oh my gosh, what a what a treat! What a what a beautiful love, human being. Right. That right? artwork does you know that comes out of beauty. That's that's yeah. an expression of her on the page. It's really beautiful. Yeah. I'm just so thrilled that we just, you know, we hit our year anniversary and now we've got so many more fun things going and that we just keep doing this. And it's so great. And our, our, so much. our people showing up and watching and adding questions. So um, <laughs> Becky said portrait of Straka. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and this week we have Kevin. Yes. Kevin Listick is joining us. And I am so excited about that. He's he does needlepoint art, and it's really fascinating, and it's whimsical too. And it's going to be really fun to explore that work with him and with us. And so I'm excited. Yes, we're doing then, artists. We're doing artists. We're supporting and celebrating artists all month long. Uh, April Mary, is for art. Is April, art April is for artists, and we have uh, Mary Jane Poris is joining us, and Kevin, see you next week, and um, Joel Scuntanis is going to close out the month for us, so we have an exciting month of artists, and, and we're so excited that Anne kicked it off today with us. So, so great, so great. So everybody, we'll see you next week. Um, I, feel like we should, I feel like we should do Carol Burnett. <laughs> Gotta go. Me. Have me. a good... Have, <laughs> Have a good night. Love Maybe you too, Maybe that'll be our sign off. Meet me. Meet me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.